Welcome to the First Day in Me Church Manassas broadcast, where the Holy Spirit empowers us to come together in the spirit of unity, ready to work and willing to serve. With sound biblical teaching, prayer, and spiritual impartation, we know that souls will be saved, lives changed, relationships restored, and the community will be empowered by the power that works in us. So once again, welcome to the First Day in the Church Manassas broadcast. Be blessed.
God, we thank you for your presence in this place. God, we feel your moving power. We feel your presence. And God, we thank you for this worship experience. Thank you, God, for you have done great things <laughs> in each one of our lives. You have done some awesome things, and God, even though we don't deserve it, you still have blessed us beyond what we even deserve. And so, God, today we say thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. Thank you, God, for this season in which the world celebrates him. But, God, we celebrate your son every day. And so, Father, we ask now that you would continue to bless us through your word. Speak, Lord, a word that will lift somebody and encourage somebody today. Speak a word in this house and in somebody's life, God. We thank you now as you continue to move by your spirit. Decrease me and increase your spirit and your will. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we have two passages of scriptures, uh, actually two verses that we want to read into your hearing this morning. The first one comes from the Old Testament book of Isaiah chapter 9. In verse 6, a very familiar passage, or actually familiar verse, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, and then a New Testament, Matthew chapter 1, verse 25. Sorry, Matthew 1, chap uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. So Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says, For to us a child is born... Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And then in Matthew chapter 1, verse 25, Behold, a virgin shall be called, shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. We just want to talk from this thought, what's in a name? What's in a name? Names have been in existence as long as humanity. God created a timeless tradition when he gave Adam the first name, which means formed of earth. Names are an integral part of who we are. And while we are all intrinsically unique, names bestow upon us a tangible way to distinguish one another. The evolution of names has been shaped by both religious and cultural influences. In ancient times, people were generally given one name, which was called, it was their given name. The name often related to a circumstance surrounding a child's birth, such as Moses, which means drawn from the water, or the name meant a trait that the parents hoped the child would possess such as Salome, which means peaceful. Also, the name could be connected with a promise or an aspiration, such as Isaac, meaning laughter, or Esther, meaning star. So what's in a name? Names are a celebration not only of our humanity, but also of our individuality, and that we are uniquely made in the image of God. But have you ever wanted to change your name? I mean, Etoria, that is just not a common name. Many times I get called Victoria, but I have to tell people, take the V-I-C off and put an E there. My first name is Etoria. But have you ever wanted to change your name? Have you met, ever met anyone that wanted to change their name? There are many people that don't like their names because their name does not represent how they see themselves or their name seems to expose them to ridicule. Some people have changed their names, in fact, have even named, renamed themselves. Let's take a quick look at this. Eric Bishop, is re he renamed himself Jamie Foxx. Yvette Stevens, 
The old school for, I see somebody laughing. Y'all know Yvette Stevens, Chaka Khan. O'Shea, O'Shea Jackson, that's Ice Cube. James Todd Smith, y'all know that one. LL Cool J, Dana Owens, Queen Latifah, Calvin Brodus. Snow oh my goodness, this side over here gets all the points. Okay, Christopher Wallace, <laughs> Biggie Sm Anna Mae Bullock. Oh, that, yeah. T Karen Johnson, Whoopi Goldberg. Cassius Clay is renamed. Yeah. Maria Nunez, renamed Mariah Carey. Steveland Morris, Stevie Wonder. Even Malcolm Little substituted an X for his last name. He said the X represented the name he never knew because Little was his slave master's name. But suppose your parents were told in advance what kind of person you would be and, you were, to and were told to give you a name that would describe you. What would your name be? Barack means blessing. Michelle means resembles God. Patricia means possessing outstanding qualities. And Jesse means God's gift. Suppose you could name a person. What would that name be? No doubt there would be a wide range of names that some would be called. Some of us would like what we are called, but some of us would be upset at the names that we are called. If by divine intervention we were miraculously given the power to name ourselves before birth, before we were born, what name would best describe you? Some would accurately de describe themselves as joy. Some would be described as precious. My mother named me Etoria, which means beautiful. Hallelujah. The name, no, truly, it's from a rich French derivative. The name, the male names of Michael, David, John, and Alexander are warrior-like names. You've met a few people whose names are Faith and Hope. There are even some people that are named Charity. These are names that seem to suggest that the person wears the exhibit that the character portrays or the, the character traits. What names do our friends use to describe us when we are not around? <laughs> Would they call you smart aleck? Would they call you arrogant? Would they call you loyal? Or would they call you a backstabber? What would your friends call you? Would they call you a wise person or just refer to you as, that's a fool right there. The terms used to describe us are the way we are seen in the eyes of others. How would you be described in your family or even in the church? Oh, she's an angel. Such a sweetheart. Oh, he is precious. Or would they describe you as the Grinch? Scrooge, that's a troublemaker right there. Oh, he or she is a snake in the grass. It's downright evil. Oh, she is wonderful. He is wonderful, a blessing and a joy to be around. How would you be described? Because we have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we now bear the name of Christian. And so our daily goal should be to see to it that the label we wear accurately describes us being called by that name. The text causes us to focus on the truth that the personality traits uh, characterized by Mary's baby were already predicted and foretold before he was given the name Jesus. The coming of the Messiah was one of the central themes in the book of Isaiah. In the first six verses of chapter 6, it paints a picture of a world that would be walking in darkness. It would literally be walking in the shadow of death, looking and searching for the light of hope. Isaiah pointed to the future birth of the Messiah that would be the very presence of God among people. In verse 6, Isaiah appears to give several names that the Messiah would be called. 
However, these were not intended to be understood as the literal names of the Messiah, but they were to be descriptions of the characteristics that he would possess. Jesus was not actually named any of the names Isaiah mentioned, but in Matthew 1.21, an angel told Joseph that he would be called Jesus. The angel told Joseph, Mary will give birth to a son, and you ought to give him the name Jesus because he will save people from their sins. And the angel noted that Mary's baby would be the one described as the prophet Emmanuel, which means God with us. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the prophet referred to in Isaiah. And so Isaiah describes the Messiah's qualities and the Messiah's nature, but Matthew tells us his name. He would be called wonderful because he would be both God and man. His life would be marked with wonderful works. He would be called counselor because he would consult with God on behalf of men and women and plead their case as a lawyer in a courtroom. He would be called almighty God because the work, the mighty work that he would perform could only be performed with the power of God. Because he would be one with God, he too would be described as the everlasting father. The kingdom that he would usher in would rest upon his standards and principles. The kingdom that he would usher in would rest upon his examples and wisdom and power. It would literally be upon his shoulders and not those of men and therefore an era would be of perfect peace that would exist. This effort of men to create the world peace, however, has failed. The description of the nature and qualities of the Savior was given for the benefit of those in the future. When Joseph received word in Matthew to name the child Jesus, he was being told to give him the name to which he would answer. Therefore, Jesus came to earth with his nature, his qualities, and purpose already predicted even before Joseph actually named him Jesus. His qualities were in him before his name was put on him. And today there are many in the world who wear labels that do not accurately describe them. In a similar sense, there are many who call themselves Christians but betray the label with their actions. The quest of many people is to get the label and look, even if it is not the real thing, but to look like the real thing. Those who want to follow Christ should recognize that in the Christian life, the qualities go in before your name ever goes on. The qualities of a true Christian is that those Christians live moral lives. Those, those Christians who live moral lives strive to live by the moral standards of God. Those who are called Christians strive. I know we don't always get it right, but we strive Strive to obey the commands referring to stealing, killing, adultery. We try to follow the command of brotherly love which supersedes and embraces all of the commandments. Those who seek to wear the name Christian without adhering to moral values is a really a hypocritical person. But I've come to tell you and God wants me to tell you that you are a Christian and the morality went in you before your name ever went on you. The other aspect of a, a Christian is that they are men and women of prayer. That means you pray and you talk to God about your needs and the needs of others. Those who pray consult God and then listen to his advice. The quality of prayerfulness went in you before your name ever got on you. The true Christian is also compassionate. He or she is concerned about the needs of others, about the needs of the poor and the disadvantaged and the less fortunate. The true Christian cannot turn a deaf ear to those who are going through trials trials. The Christian cannot turn a deaf ear to those who are suffering. Why? Because it is not in our nature. The spirit of compassion goes into your heart and it went into your heart even before you got the name. 
What Christ brought to the world was a spirit of compassion and love for others. Those who follow him must incorporate that spirit into their spirits before they set out to call themselves a Christian. The quality goes in before your name goes on. Lillian, your qualities went in before your name was, and Lillian's name means peace and purity. And my God, Reverend Lillian exudes peace and and purity. Pauline, your name, your the quality went in before your name went on. Pauline symbolizes loving and humility. Kimberly, your quality went in before your name went on. And Kimberly is a seeker of truth. It is one who is noble. Phyllis, your name, the quality went in before your name went on. Phyllis means giver of yourself. John, your quality went in before your name went on. John means to be gracious. Elijah, we got a baby here. Where's Elijah? Hold him up. He's in the back. All right. But Elijah's name means spiritual champion. He's eight months old. His quality went in him before his name ever got on him. And I was reminded as my sister and why I watched the documentary over this past uh, the Thanksgiving holiday when we looked uh, at Nelson Mandela's life, uh, I was reminded uh, that his name meant troublemaker. Before he was born, the quality already went in him, but his troublemaking was in a good way. He stood against apartheid and others stood with him. Nelson's name means desire to inspire others to a higher cause. O-M to the G. Isn't that Nelson Mandela? During the course of his time in jail, he had favor. God blessed him day by day and God fed him day by day and even transformed some of the minds of those who were guards in the prison because they began Begin to sneak things to him uh, and give him sustenance and life. And after 27 years of being in prison, Nelson Mandela walked out of Robbins Island with grace and dignity as a free man. He walked out of that prison without hatred, without bitterness, and without unforgiveness in his heart. People all around the world have suffered, but Nelson Mandela, we got the best in him. Why? Because he demonstrates his name that he inspires and that he lifts up others. His, the qualities went in before his name went on. He was chosen by God to lead, and that's exactly what he did, and went on to become the first black man to occupy the seat of the president of South Africa. His quality went in before his name went on. What's in a name? Isaiah made it plain that the Christ child would be Emmanuel and represents the presence of God with us. And that ought to be comforting for those who are living in troubled times. And all of us are living here in troubled times. The comfort should come in knowing that no matter how bad things get, God is with us. Whether it's a rise in crime, whether there is world unrest, we are assured that we serve a mighty God who is able to balance the inequities of the times and give us perfect peace in the midst of the storm. Every child of God is confident because they know that God is with them. And this confidence leads us to conclude that even though in your life the tears might fall, God is with you. Even though you find yourself in a difficult situation. God is with you. Sometimes O-M to the G, the burdens get mighty heavy. And I know a lot of y'all have seen that video that's gone viral from Dr. Howard John Wesley that talked about the burdens of pastoral ministry. But even so, and he's taken a three-month sabbatical, but even in the heaviness, even in the burdens, God is with Disappointments will break your heart and pain will inflict 
like your body, but God is with you. And despite it all, God is able to deliver each and every one of us in here. We know he is able because his name tells the story. His name is so powerful that it is the only name under the heavens that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. The scriptures declare, yes, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And so, church, we trust in the name of Jesus because the quality went in before the name went on and because the power went in before the name went on. The architect can call him the chief cornerstone. The astronomer can call him the bright and morning star. The culinary person can call him the living bread. The banker can call him the hidden treasure. His quality went in before his name went on. To the carpenter, he's the sure foundation. To the doctor, he's the great physician. To the educator, he is an awesome teacher. To the florist, he's the lily of the valley and the rose of Sharon. His qualities went in before his name went on. To the geologist, he's a rock of ages. To the journalist, he's the good news of the gospel. To the philosopher, he is the wisdom of God. To the sinner, that's you and me, he is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. To the Christian, he's the son of the living God. He's the Savior. He's a Redeemer. He went to Calvary and rose from the dead. And now he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But that name was already on him even before he was born. He is wonderful. He is a counselor. He is a mighty God. He is a everlasting Father. He is a the Prince of Peace, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Which means God is with us. His qualities went in before his name went on. What's in a name? What's in a name? What's in a name? God. Amen, amen, amen. That's all the time we have for today's broadcast, and we pray that you have truly been blessed. First AME Church Manassas is located at 10313 South Grand Avenue in Manassas, Virginia, and we encourage you to come by and visit at any time. Thursday night Bible study starts at 7 p.m. Sunday mornings at 8.30, we have church school classes for all age groups, and our dynamic worship service starts at 10 a.m. For more information, call 703-361-8791 or just visit us on the web at famechurch.com. Be blessed. Be blessed.